Gabe, thanks uh, so much for taking the time for this interview. And thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, first, we'd like to know what's the term gamification? What does it mean for those who are not really familiar with the term? Well, gamification is the process of using game thinking and game mechanics to engage audiences and solve problems. Hmm. And so what that really means is it's about taking the best ideas from games, no matter what kind of game you're thinking about, you know, hmm. from a board game to a hardcore game like World of Warcraft or a casual game like Farmville, hmm. taking the best ideas from games and using them in places where we normally wouldn't associate games to be. Things like healthcare or education or marketing and advertising. Uh, so you've mentioned that uh, a good game is composed of partly ideas but also mechanics. So let us know more about that point. So, you know, in the classic thinking about video games over the last 30 years, mm. most people have assumed that video games were for young boys. I think that's the main yeah. sort of assumption. And, you know, that it was uh, maybe even socially maladjusted young boys. You know, ones who don't really like other people and certainly not for girls and definitely not for older people. And so one of the things that we've learned over the last few years, in particular uh, from social games, is that if you def design a game well, if you design it for the emotional side of a user's experience, then you can design something that all ages, all genders, all socioeconomic statuses can find appealing and interesting. And behind that is a very, very uh, interesting analysis of what's compelling about games, gamification, and something that we can bring forward from games to any problem that we want to solve in the world. And that is that feedback, friends, and fun drive human behavior. Anytime we bring feedback, friends, and fun into a system, we can markedly change people's behavior. It is the most powerful way to influence the outcome of a particular situation is to bring that in. Mm. And that's a principal piece of what makes games so compelling. It's mm. part of why social games like Farmville have been so successful. They're all about that. Mm. And why early examples of gamification in fields as wide ranging as the enterprise, health, education have been so successful. It's mm. feedback, friends, and fun. Mm. So for those young entrepreneurs who want to be into the industry of, of games, what kind of advice would you give them in order for them to, to create successful games? Well, if you're making actual games, so uh, entertainment-based, you know, video or com computer or mobile games, then the best thing for you, obviously, to do is get a really structured game education. You need mm. to understand game design. You need to understand the prior uh, design patterns. You need to play a lot of games. I think it's a, mm. yeah. probably the most fun thing that prescription that you can give to somebody looking for a new career. Mm. If you're looking to apply gamification uh, to your business or industrial objective or you know market or what have you, then you need to understand a slightly different pattern of design. So in gamification, we don't only use game concepts, we also take concepts from loyalty programs mm. and from behavioral economics. So game design, loyalty program, behavioral economics are the three fields that drive gamified design. Mm -hmm. So there is a misconception that games for kids would be distracting and not really a motivating factor for their studies or for, for the general well-being. So tell us more about that point. Well. One thing that's really changed over the past like 15 or 20 years, as games have risen to prominence, mm. there is an increasing divide between older generations and younger generations. Mm. And by observation, you know, particularly the youngest generation today, let's say five or six years old, people who were born you know, in the late uh, first decade of the 2000s, this generation has really been brought up with video games as their principal form of entertainment. It is incredibly a core part of their life, very mm. influential. Even if they're not spending as much time on video games as they are on television, it's affecting their brains and the way they see the world and how they interact with other people. Mm. And this means that to a great extent, these younger generation perceives the world that we live in as very slow. Mm. So they want everything to happen faster. They want it to be more uh, rewarding. They want it to be more social, mm. right? They want it to be more fun. Uh, feedback, friends, and fun. Mm. So they're looking for a world that moves faster, that's more engaging. Mm. And that means that many of the old models of education, of engagement, of social action, are not really going to be compelling to this younger generation. They're going to seem boring or flat. Mm. So part of the opportunity here is to see that games and this new gamer generation can be best influenced, they can be best spoken to motivated, educated, hmm. by using the language and pacing and motivational structures of games. Hmm. It's an important insight. And it means, critically, for parents, for educators, 
for people in government or you know in positions of power who are older, it's important to not fight games as a key trend in uh, in culture, mm -hmm. but rather it would be useful to learn the games that your kids are playing. And mm -hmm. the number one advice to any parent of a young child today that I give on a regular basis is play games with your children. Play mm -hmm. the games they're playing. Understand the culture that they're growing up in and the kinds of motivations that they're seeing. That will give you maximum insight into how to be a better parent or educator or uh, governor. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks a lot for this great interview and we uh, hope to see you again soon in Doha. Sure. Thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. Thanks.